So in this question, we're looking at mice, and we know that round ears is capital E, so a small e will designate the recessive pointy ears. Now since this is a dihybrid cross, we have two different conditions we're looking at. Okay, so not only are we looking at round ears versus pointy ears, we're also looking at tails. So a capital T is going to be long tails, and a small t is going to be a short tail. Okay, so let's look at the different mice that we're going to be crossing. So the first mouse is a mouse that is homozygous for round ears and short tails. So homozygous, if you remember, means that it has two of the same allele for the gene. Okay, so for the ear gene, it's going to have two alleles for round ears. We know that round ears is big E, big E. So our first mouse is big E, big E. That's homozygous. It has two copies of the same allele. And then that mouse also has, is also homozygous for short tails. So short tails is small t, small t. And we put it together like this because the mouse this is one mouse. It's homozygous for round ears and short tail. Now our second mouse is a mouse that is homozygous for both pointy ears and long tails. So pointy ears is the small e allele. So that's going to be homozygous for pointy ears, and it's also homozygous for long tails. So that is our second mouse. Now when you cross these, you have to make gametes from both of these mice that contain all combinations of the two different genes. Okay, we have the gene for ears and the gene for tails. So if when we have E, E, T, T, this is the male. One of the sperm is going to have E, T, E, T, See how I'm combining every single possibility here. So now I have every single possibility, but if I look at this, there's only really one possibility, and that is big E small t. So I can save myself a lot of time in my Punnett square by just making one row for that mouse. Now we're in the same exact situation with our second mouse because if we put every combination of every gene together here we see that the only possibility we come up with is a small e big T. So we can make a big shortcut and only have a one square Punnett square because these are the only possibilities of the gametes for this cross. So now these are the gametes. We have sperm on one side, egg on the other, and then when they come together we put the genes back together. So we take the E here and the E here 
and then the big T and the small T. And it's just usual convention to put the dominant gene first. So the genotype of the offspring is going to be 100% big E, small e, big T, little t, and the phenotype is going to be 100%. If we go back to here, E is round ears, so we have one copy of that, so we know it's going to be a round ear. And what is big T again? If we go back to here, we've got long tails. Or I should say mice, sorry. Now we're going to move on to the second part of the dihybrid cross question from Lab 5, question 6. So review from the previous problem. We have two mice that are being crossed, and they have round ears, long tails, and we're crossing two mice with those exact alleles from those gene types. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make our gametes. So if we look at every combination of gametes that we can make with both of these gene types in it, this is what we end up with. So you have to have one copy of each gene. So one allele can be big E, big T. Another allele uh, sorry, another gamete. Say the wrong words. So this can be one gamete. It's going to be big E, small t. So we're making every combination of gamete here. In case I used the wrong words a second ago. I tell you, these recordings are hard to make. <laughs> so I'm just going through and making sure I have every combination. So I have a big E in two combined with a big T and a little t, and then the small e is also combined with a big T and the small t. So that's every combination of gamete we can make. And we have both parents are the same. So we're going to have a huge Punnett square here. Okay, so we have to put all of these gametes in the Punnett square. So we're going to have big E, big T, big E, little t, little E, big T, little E, little t. And then if we make a Punnett square across here, then we have to have big E, big T, big E, little t, little e, big t, little e, little t. So I'll do the first few and then I'll stop and start the recording again. So this one, we're going to have to put the E's and the T's back together, big E, big T, big E, big E, big T, little t, big E, little E, big T, big T, and I'll stop and come back with this filled out. Okay, I'm back now with a filled out Punnett square. I'm hoping this is going to work this trick. So let's look at all the different combinations that we have. We have big E, big E, big T, big T. How many of those do we have? You look through the Punnett square, you can see we only have one of those. So that's going to be 1 out of 16. Now if we look at big E, little E, big T, big T, 
if you look, how many of those do we have? We've got one here, and we've got one here. So we've got two sixteenths of those. What's the next one that we want? How about big E, big E, big T, little t? See, we've got one there, two. I'm going to make sure that I have them all. This is the tedious part. Big E, big E, big T, little t. I believe we have two of those. Okay, and then another option is big E, big E, little t, little t. And it looks like we have, I'm going to put a different mark so I don't lose track here. We've got one of those. And then another option, big E, little t, big t, little t. That's going to be, let's count those, one, two, three, four. So we have four of those. Another option, what am I doing here? Big E's, now I'm on little E, little E, big T, big T. We have one of those. What do I have left? I've got big E, little E, tiny T, tiny T. Uh, I've run out of shapes. How about a twirly? One, two, and then I've got small E, small E, big T, little T. And again, I've got two of those, and little e, little e, little t, little t, I've got one sixteenth of those. So now, if we look at round-eared short tails, That's going to end up being 3 sixteenths. Let's identify those. So round ears is going to be anything with a big E. And a short tail is going to be with the two small T's. So we've got that guy is round eared, short tailed. We've got, not that one, this one, 1 sixteenth. This guy is round-eared short tail. So if we add two plus one, we've got three sixteenths there. And then if we do round ear long tail, we have nine sixteenths. And let's look at how we got that one. So round ear has to have a big E, and long tail has to have a big T. So we've got one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Our next option is pointy ears, long tail. And that's going to have to have two small E's and one big T. So here we have that and we have that. So we've got three sixteenths again. And then the double recessive is going to be pointy ears. Short tail. And that's going to be 